Hello everybody and welcome back to Desks and Dorks, it's your favorite board game design creation podcast and as always is shaped by you, we bring you the best at needy tabletop games. I am Kyle, I am the dork, and uh, first things first, one, it's Tier List Tuesday. You all love these tier lists if my metrics are any uh, thing to go off of. Thank you, by the way, to all of you who are here and are new. Hello, welcome to Desks and Dorks. If you're here for D&D Tier Lists, we do them on Tuesdays now. Uh, yes, D&D Tier List Tuesday is now going to be a legit thing, which is awesome. Thank you again to everybody. This is the best metrics I've had in, like, months, and it's great. Uh, it's awesome to see so many people watching what we do. Uh, thank you. Two quick asks. One. Oh, there it is. You have always lived in the lighthouse is completely and totally live right now. If you have the financial means to do so and you're interested in a two-player storytelling RPG with a huge focus on character creation and a shared GM rule set, please give it a look. Give it a like, a share, a, a, a back us on Kickstarter. We have 145 followers. It's it's staggering. We had like 60-some the last time that we did this. We had 67 the last time we did After the Rain, uh, which again is right here. Ooh, ah, very pretty. Uh, so I'm really excited. I am flabbergasted, and I am grateful for the love and support. Two, if you like these D&D tier lists, sound off in the comments below about what you would like to see me do in a tier list next. I am not going to lie to y'all. Um, I'm, I'm the, some of the tier list tier maker stuff is great, but I'm running low on ideas, and I would love to hear what some of you have said about these tier lists. That being said, let's talk about what a tier list is. S, the best. A, very good. B, solid. C, average. D, below average. I did not add an F. I think almost all of the monsters, you know what, we're going to add an F anyway, just in case. Um, because, of course, we are, and I don't know, maybe I will, as I'm reviewing these, I'll realize that I hate some of them. F is a failure, it's the worst. I have added two or three other tier lists, or tiers to the usual tier list. Uh, one is the Covered in the Race tier list. I covered uh, quite a few Dungeons and Dragons races in the D&D race tier list. Um, I talked about my love for GMing some of the races that are there and how I think some of them are really interesting. I am not going to rehash these. If you would like to see my thoughts on any of these, go to the race tier list. It's like the next biggest tier list here. Uh, two, there is a dragon tier. Here's the deal, folks. Unless the dragon is uh, interesting or there's not a vanilla dragon i'm not going to rank it the game is called dungeons and dragons i am sorry they 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 wash everybody else this would be so uninteresting if i ranked the dragons it would be s plus tier up here and nobody cares right because the game is dungeons and dragons we all know no one's no one's doing dungeons and quasits right like it doesn't exist so rather than be bored about it i put them here this is the IDK. Kyle is just a human tier. I have dungeon mastered for a very long time. That does not mean I have used every monster. Um, there will be some that I have not used, I'm not very familiar with. I don't want to lie to you guys, so I'm just going to put them in the human tier list because I am a human and I don't know everything, except I know that you should give us a like, a share, a comment. I'm not going to make that joke. All right, let's move on. Abolith uh, goes right to the A tier. The Abolith is an abomination from beyond the realms that usually uh, dwells in... Large bodies of water, subterranean sunken cavern systems, and the like. The reason I like the Abolith is that it is literally an eldritch abomination. It uses magic and horrible, horrible powers to twist mortal beings into shells of them former self, shells of their former selves. It's hard to say, and uh, basically can corrupt and destroy entire kingdoms. I think it's rad. I think it gets outclassed by some of the monsters in S tier, but it is definitely top of the A tier for right. Now, I have no clue what this giant eye is. Dryad can go in the C tier. This monster is fine. Um, this is definitely the Dryad art. I know it is. But the Dryad is a woodland spirit. It is connected to trees. If you like that sort of thing, you will probably like it. Actually, the more I talk, the more I'm like, eh, Dryad's kind of boring. D for Dryad. No clue what this is, except that if you have trypophobia or whatever the fear of multiple orifices, this is probably really scary. Uh, this is an air elemental. I'm going to put air elemental in the B tier, if only because uh, there are some really cool things that you can do with air elementals. I read one of the R.A. Salvador books. Um, I believe it is Homeland, the first in the Drist uh, original saga where he's living in the Underdark. And his dad, who is a drow named Zaknafane, which is just a sick name. Uh, literally puts himself inside an air elemental and the air elemental levitates him like this uh, and then airdrops him in literally into an enemy base. It's sick. Um, so go air elemental. I think air elementals are cool. This is a sphinx of some kind or a 
Yeah, this is a Sphinx of some kind. Sphinx I'm going to put in the C tier. I like Sphinx. I think it's an interesting... No, C or B, C or B, C or B. We'll do low B for right now. I might go back and change that. Um, Sphinx, Riddles, uh, body, body of a Lion, Wings of an Eagle, Face of a Lion Human thing. It's fine. This is a Steel Golem. Uh, shockingly enough, I think Constructs are really interesting. I think they're super cool. I love Golems. Uh, golems have been one of my favorite things ever i am a huge fan of hebrew literature if you've never read the actual folklore behind the golem uh, i would highly encourage it spoiler alert i like all of the golems they're all going to wind up somewhere in this tier list so don't worry about it uh this is an ankeg an ankeg is basically a giant semi-sentient although i guess it depends they've changed some of the stuff from 5e that they had in past editions if this was like a 3.5 monster manual i could probably tell you where some of them were in the book without looking at the table of contents. But an Ankeg is basically just a giant uh, bug-like creature. Actually, D tier, I think it's meh. Uh, this is an Azur. Azurs are a group of fire-born... They're like fire dwarves. Like, imagine a dwarf and a bonfire had a baby. And that's basically what this is. They live in the elemental plane of fire and occasionally other places like the Nine Hells. Um, they usually work with Efreet, which is kind of cool. Um, they have like bronze metal skin, which is kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, it's literally hard. Uh, but yeah, I think the Azers are cool. I think they're fun. Baylor, uh, S tier. Uh, this is a Balrog. Balor, Balrog. It's a Balrog. Um, these are the generals of the demonic forces. They're sick, dude. They have a giant evil whip that like Castlevania's it and explodes. They got big swords. They have a Vorpal plus five sword, usually. They are just sick, dude. Look at, look at this. This is iconic. Look at the muscularity. Um, yeah, it's just great. This is a Bebelith, which is a weird uh, gibbering abomination. Uh, it has multiple legs and occasionally breath weapons. Is that a Bebelith or a Bahir? Oh, this is a Bahir, which is fine. Uh, same thing. If you like your multiple-legged lizard beasts, this is kind of cool. A bearded devil can go in the F tier, actually. Um, I I don't understand the purpose of a bearded devil. Uh, they are supposed to be the shock troops of the demonic forces in Dungeons and Dragons. They have a beard, shockingly enough, of like uh, moving, grabby little spike tentacles and a big glaive. They are truthfully really stupid. Um, this is amazing. This is hot trash. I'm sorry, I don't know why people think the Bearded Devils are kind of cool. Dungeons and Dragons, you can get rid of this creature. It is okay. You can get rid of them. They're not that interesting. They are not that cool. The the evil beings, you, you could literally... Honestly, even without the beard. Why, are, why is it a beard? It's just lame. It's just lame. Dexter's Lab did it better. Uh, this is Black Orc Jelly. I think Black Orc Jelly can go in the B tier. I think the ooze monsters in Dungeons and Dragons are really interesting uh, conceptually in that they offer a uh, creature that is really deadly and really scary to fight for your party, uh, but doesn't fight them for like reasons, right? There, it is a no thoughts only vibes kind of creature, and that's kind of cool and kind of necessary sometimes. Could be useful. Uh, a bullet or a land shark. I think this creature is awesome. I don't know what it is about a bullet. Uh, I think they're great. Or a boulet. I think it's a bullet. Um, I think they're awesome. I think they're cool. They're just little burly boys. Uh, this is a chain devil. The art on the 5th edition chain devil sucks. But the uh, creature itself is still kind of rad. Like, this is terrible. This is great. Um, something about the idea of like big chain meat hooks all becoming sentient and animated because of a devil's curse and then literally you them you like the center of this maelstrom of flaying metal is just a really cool mental image um it's awesome chimera s tier love the chimera this is a classic ripoff from greek mythology where the chimera was indeed a real monster uh, fun fact, if you like Pegasus, he first appears, or his most famous appearance, I should say, in Greek myth, is in The Legend of the Chimera. Um, I love the Chimera. I think it's cool. It's like poison gas, lightning, and fire. That's dope. It can fly. Look at those giant evil appendages. This is a chull. Chulls are um, crab people. 
They have uh, the ability to like overwhelm people's minds. They're like not quite demons, but they're like just just they're evil crab people. They they wind up feeling like a cheap knockoff Doctor Who villain rather than anything of any real sentience or semblance of importance. Uh, Clay Golem up in the A tier. Love the Clay Golem. Cloakers. Controversial opinion. I think Cloakers are pretty good. Uh, at the time that your opponents or your party should start fighting Cloakers, it's like a weird transitional part of their leveling. And so you you can't throw really powerful stuff at them quite yet. But what you can do is you can find interesting low-level opponents that challenge the way your party fights. Cloakers usually fight in darkness. They usually ambush from the top of a uh, cavern roof. I don't know, cavern ceiling, right? Um, which makes it interesting. So again, I'm going to put in the B tier. I think it's kind of cool. This is a giant of some kind. I'm just going to put it here because my brother in Christ, it has no head. I don't know what you want me to do with that. Cockatrice. Uh, B tier as well. Again, this is another one of those like semi-low level creatures that has a really, really annoying ability that can be kind of a hassle and a half to deal with. It's cool. Coatl. S tier. I'm going to put it above the boulette. I'm going to do this. Boulette can go to the bottom. Coatls are awesome. I love Mesoamerican mythology. A coatl is based on uh, Quetzalcoatl, who is the uh, basically is like the Aztec's chief good deity, or like Mesoamer is a chief good deity in Mesoamerican culture. Really interesting. In Dungeons and Dragons, they continue that. They're usually protectors of good. They have tons of really interesting spellcasting abilities. And uh, drip for days. Uh, they're awesome. I love Quattles. This is a this is a solar, I believe. It's tough because there's multiple celestials on this list, um, and a lot of them they don't do a great job of differentiating the celestials. But that's okay. Uh, I think the solars are awesome. I talked about this in the race tier list, but I think um, your demonic forces and your celestial forces should be super powerful and really interesting. Um, and I think that those races do not do enough to make those concepts interesting. I think the solar is awesome. Dark Mantle, D tier. This is a worse version of a cloaker. You can throw them in swarms. They're more annoying than they are challenging or interesting. I believe this is a genie. I'm going to put the genie in the B tier. Genies are fine, but they do more interesting stuff later on. Again, I have no clue what these are. I don't know why my brother in Christ. Maybe this is a Bodak, but I can't be entirely sure. This is a Drider. Driders are sick. And they're not sick just because, like, wow, cool, look at the giant terrifying spider person. Um, I really love the original lore behind the drow. I still like some of the new lore behind the drow. They've done a lot to sort of curtail how evil the drow are, uh, which is certainly a decision that you can make. Uh, I don't think it's a decision that works particularly well, but I can see why they might want to get away from making a single... Um, uh, like group of individuals just uh, monotonely evil. I get why you might want to do that. Um, so there are certain bad actors, I think, that might clom onto that um, and use that as a springboard for some stuff. But uh, I do like that the Drider is a a poignant story because a Drider is essentially a drow that has been punished by Lolth, which is their chief deity, and has left them with greater power, which is interesting because the greater power part is exactly what the uh, drow are all about all the time always but they are horribly disfigured which uh, fights against the drow's vanity and they are left as a constant never-ending reminder that the drow um, failed and I think that's kind of dope actually I've talked myself into S tier uh, this is a Durgar they are like underground gnomes. Apparently, in order to make gnomes cooler, all you had to do was give them city-states like ancient Greece and put them into a dark, dark abyss. It's kind of sick. This is something that I have no idea what it is. This is an Earth Elemental. Earth Elementals can go in the C tier. Ah, B tier. I think they're kind of cool. They're a little one note. Efreets are great. Efreets go to the top of the A tier. Efreets are... Interesting for a number of different reasons. You have the power that comes intrinsic with the djinn. Um, you also have the palace intrigues of like Ottoman era sultanates. And it's like all this backstabbing and political machinations, but with everybody who has fire powers and magic. It's just cool. The freets are great. This is a Uranese. A Uranese also kind of cool. Uh, they're like uh, corrupt demonic angels. They are sick as all get out almost want to put them in the S tier, but I think I'm going to leave them in the A. 
This is an Ettercap. An Ettercap is a spider-like humanoid that can lay eggs and trap people in webs. It is uh, horrifying and also kind of an interesting, again, low to mid-level challenge for certain parties. I think it's kind of cool. Ettens, I think, are really interesting. I'm going to put Etten at the top of the C tier. Um, it's essentially an ogre from World of Warcraft with two heads. Or I guess I should say like the Warcraft franchise because they started it first before WoW came out. But um, yeah, this is a big, dumb brute. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump it up to the B tier. Um, because one of the things that I like about the Ettens is that the heads have two different personalities and they are constantly at war with each other. Uh, some of my favorite D&D &D stories uh, and some of my favorite D&D &D moments have been players actually playing the two heads of the Ettens against each other, which I think is really interesting. Fire Elemental, I think, can also go in the B tier. This is a Flesh Golem, if memory serves. And the Flesh Golem goes right in the A tier with the rest of its Golem brethren. This is a Gargoyle. All I want to do, oh, I want to do the bit so badly. For those of you who are Hero Quest fans, Bardic Broadcast is this guy. He does this thing where he's like, this is an abomination. This is a gargoyle. Um, uh, this is a gargoyle. It's fantastic. Gargoyles are great. I love everything about the mythos. I love that they're um, finding new life in Dungeons and Dragons as these stone protectors of buildings. Uh, can you tell I was a 90s baby? I grew up with the show Gargoyles. Uh, this is a gelatinous cube. I don't know what it is about the gelatinous cube that I like, but it, like, the the gelatinous cube is frustrating because it, it defies ranking, right? Like, that's the interesting part about the gelatinous cube, is it defies ranking. I don't know why I like it, I just know that it's great. Like, in a world of giant evil demons and huge screw-you gods and massive beings made of living fire, there is just one cube of, of acid, and it just, like, it just, it just sluices its way through this dungeon and just murders people, and it's so stupid. It's so stupid, it wraps right back around uh, to being brilliant, and I think that's great. I think we're going to rank one more, and then I'm going to do a part two of the tier list. I think that'll be cool, because we're nearing uh, the end of the time that you guys usually uh, kind of check out in the video. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm getting everybody here. And dear God, we have so, so many more monsters to go. Um, last one, uh, but certainly not least, this is a ghoul. I think ghouls are cool. I, I'm going to put them in the A tier. They've done a lot to tone down the ghoul lore, um, but I do like the idea of this sort of flesh-eating zombie, and you're like, oh, this will be fine, and actually... Um, it is not fine. It is uh, much faster and much deadlier and much smarter than you would expect. That is part one of the Dungeons & Dragons Monsters tier list. I will be doing the next part of this tier list on Thursday. If you like this video, give it a like, a share, a comment, a subscribe. And again, I'm going to reiterate what I said at the beginning. Please check out You Have Always Lived in the Lighthouse. It's right here. Look at the beautiful colors. It's awesome. We would really, really appreciate it. It's in the description below. Two, if you like these videos, and again, it sounds like a lot of you do, or at least a lot of you like watching them, so you can dislike them and, and tell everyone why I'm wrong, which is okay, cool. You can do that. That's really fine. Um, if you do like these, if they are entertaining to you, if you see value in this concept, I'm going to ask you one more time, please make your voices heard in the comments. Let me know what kind of tier list you would like me to do. Uh, until then, I am Kyle Ott for Discs and Dorks. This is part one of the Dungeons & Dragons monster tier list. Y'all have been great. I really appreciate it. Please make sure that you go check out You Have Always Lived at the Lighthouse. But until next time, I'll see y'all later. Peace.